Welcome, everybody, to another episode of We Are the Batman. I'm Matthew, and I've got... Oh, oh hi. I'm Mike, everybody. <laughs> and apparently, I suck at the intro. We should just let Mike do it anyway. But what we are doing today is we have kind of decided that you guys may not know us. We're egomaniacs and feel like you followed us through all of our things. But it could be this is the only podcast that we've ever done that you guys have listened to us. So I thought, you know what, Mike, we should interview each other. And you said. You egomaniac. Yeah, okay, I guess so. Fine, let's do it. Which is how most of our conversations usually go. (laughs) (laughs) I throw something out there. He says, yeah, he throws something out there. I say no. Then he throws it again. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. (laughs) It's only a good idea if it's my idea, even if I stole your idea. I mean, look, as long as my idea is the one that gets implemented, that's all that matters. You know when you go to sleep that I'm a piece of crap and I steal your idea, so. <laughs> of course. Of course. That's, that's yeah, that's what the show's all about, man. <sighs> well, today I am interviewing you, Mr. Shea, and I want to do something a little different. Okay. Is that most of these interview shows I listen to, they have these big, long conversations. And at the end, when we're done, they're like, let's go do the lightning round. And then it seems to take forever and it gets kind of tedious. I'm feeling a little attacked right now because that's <laughs> what I've done. <laughs> I always do it myself. So I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to start with the quick fire questions. Okay. So I'm going to toss a question at you. And, you know, I know we're both verbose. We're going to try and not get that way, but I'm just going to start throwing stuff at you. And I'm going to start off with a traitorous question. All right. What is your favorite Marvel film? Uh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> not how I saw that going. <laughs> um, I mean, in the, in, in the MCU, it's probably, yeah, it's, 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 um, shoot. It's probably Captain America, the winter soldier. Honestly. I mean, that's a correct answer. So good. Uh, yeah. I, I love, I, I want to say like other things that I, that I get more out of, but there's just something about that movie that I can never not watch it. it it's the, it, one of the only films of all time, especially in this genre that bell to bell perfection. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> well then on the flip, what's your favorite DC film? Uh, oh man, that's a loaded question. Cause like, I mean, I, I hate to be the guy who says it, but like the Batman is my favorite Batman film right now. It, it supplanted the dark Knight somehow. And that was a long conversation I had to have with myself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's probably, it's, it's either that. It's I, I mean, it's either that or the Dark Knight. I, I mean, I love the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie, but um, yeah, it's I, I guess the Batman at, at, at the moment. Okay, well, that kills my next question, so we'll go to my follow up. Who is your favorite <laughs> live action Batman? Oh man, and see, I know you hated it, but I did love me some Ben Affleck. I really did, and I was really bummed he didn't get a. a better bigger shot i know there's a chance we'll be seeing more of him in the in the near future but um it's either it's either ben affleck or robert pattinson um because i love the movie robert pattinson's playing him in but there was something about ben affleck's take on on uh you know a grizzled bruce wayne batman that just i really enjoyed and plus it just seemed like he really got he looked like a Batman. He looked like a Bruce Wayne. He he didn't he isn't what I didn't like. I thought I thought that even All right, I'm going to put it out there. Even with how horribly written those things were, he was dialed all in on what they were asking him to be as Batman. So I I don't I I really wish he could have done his own Batman movie. I really wish I could have seen him be a cool Batman. Um so yeah, I have no problem with that answer at all i i I, i'm i i've i don't know if i've told you this story but way back when right after batman and robin had failed miserably and we all kind of knew they were going to reboot it me and a buddy were at a starbucks before starbucks was like the big cool thing and we were like how would you do this and i detailed out what i would do as my batman movie and Mm -hmm. cast ben affleck and this would have been 98 
97, 98 ish, right after Batman. Okay. And I think the funniest thing that we made a joke about later is of my 15 beats, Batman begins hits 13 of them. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and we, I would, I made the joke after that movie came out. I was like, dude, was David Goyer at that Starbucks <laughs> <laughs> at the table next to us? And we just didn't realize. So no, I've, I've been Affleck. Dude, I even liked him as Daredevil. I mean, that movie was, you know, the direct the <laughs> the director's cut's great. Yeah. Yeah. The yes. director's cut's great. Yeah. But yeah, so all right. So enough of that tangent. All right. Let's see here. All right. So we're going to get into comic book stuff. And we'll kind of play with the, the films as well. Or let's all just right. stick with film. What is your favorite Batman live action costume? Oh, um, it's probably Ben Affleck's. Okay. That not the armored one, but that that bat suit of his just looked so good. I like Robert Pattinson's. I I don't think we see enough of it. Like a lot of the shots of him are either wide or kind of close up, which is good for the kind of story they were telling, but like um yeah, I don't know, man. There is something about about Affleck's costume. It's it's just it is it is Batman like it is just quintessential Batman it looks very good and maybe it's part of it's the way he wears it um, but I really liked his suit a lot I was just happy they weren't doing the all black thing and I thought that was cool I and I think that's part of what it is like growing up yeah all black bat suits look cool um, the one in Batman Begins isn't bad it's it's pretty good the one in in Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises is is okay it just it it, the way it fits his head always bothered me. Yeah, the, the one from um, the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises is what the suit should look like in real life, which is what I can appreciate about it. But yeah, I just it's not don't bad. think it it doesn't work for me. Yeah, it's it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's real it's realistic almost to a fault. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, probably Ben Affleck is what I'm going to go. Now, this with. one's a little bit. We're getting into some sweaty stuff right now. Do you have a favorite nice. Batman suit from the comics? Oh, mm, you know, God, that new Fifty Two suit was really good. Okay, that new Fifty Two suit was very, very good. Um, yeah, probably. I know people have a love and hate thing with the new 52. I, I didn't mind it as much, but um, I think that's just more of kind of the the, jet, the age I was when it happened. Um, so probably either his new 52 suit or um, the Batman Incorporated suit was good too. Yeah, that one, that one, the seams I'm, were a little more made sense. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm thinking back to the video games and all the alt suits they have. And, and I'm like, which one of those? Oh yeah. The Batman incorporated suit. I mostly because I really like the, the utility belt on the Batman incorporated suit. And that's kind of where a lot of it goes for me is, um, is do the utility belts look ridiculous and his look really cool. And so, yeah, that that's probably the one. All right, we're going to jump back for, to film for a second. Give yeah. me a random casting for Batman and one of his villains. Like just like what you would do. Oh, God. All right. Well, um, I am still to this day dying on this mountain for the villain that uh, uh, Michael Shannon should play Harvey Dent Two Face. I will die on that hill. I will. I will sing that song until I'm blue in the face. Um, as far as playing Batman goes, um, oh God, this is so. You, I can't just off the cuff come up with a Batman. Um, <laughs> that's hard. Because I never in a because I, I never in a million years would have picked Ben Affleck or Robert Pattinson, but there you go. Um, I'll give you a random one while you're thinking, just because. Yeah, what do you got? Do you when got? I had to do for Fanboy Junction, we had to do Batman um, under the Red Hood. Okay. So Batman was supposed to be a little bit older. I cast Eric Bana. That's not bad. I do like Eric Bana. Dude, I just think of him from you know Troy. What? To, to go a little bit on the younger side and only because he voiced him at one point and I want to see, I think he could do it like Jensen Eccles. Give me Jensen Eccles. Let, let, give him a shot. Yeah. I, I hate to be this way because we may have to fight, but I really hate that. The only time he got to voice Batman was in the long Halloween. Yeah. And I like the long Halloween movie. Just fine. I mean, the comic is obviously a million times better, but 
like but he was great as the red hood yes and i actually thought he was pretty damn good as the batman i'm like you know what give him some more yeah give him some more yeah that uh, yeah i would have done that all right so <laughs> here's here's kind of a fun one <laughs> what batman villain would you play if they were like dude we want you in the next batman movie oh. you play a villain <laughs> I mean, just kind of knowing who I am, I could see myself being like either uh, 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 Dollmaker or Toy Man. Okay. Just because I don't know, they're 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 weird to the point of being creepy, and I'm a weird dude, and um, just just kind of my physical appearance, like I'm this heavy set, hairy hairy dude. It was just kind of a loner. Like I just, I sit in my house all day just by myself doing nothing. Um, and my wall, my, the shelf on my, by my wall is covered in Funko pops. And so, um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be the toy man that attacks Gotham with, 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 uh, weaponized Funko pops is, is what I do. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Even though it's, I don't think it's a Batman, I think it's more of a Superman villain, but like it, it, it'll work. DC villains are kind of interchangeable. Yes. Yes. Um, all right, so here we'll go kind of now get into the conversation about Batman. Um, yeah. So how did you discover him? Like, are you did you see him in the cartoon first, in a movie, in a comic? How does he come into your life? It was probably it was probably the Bruce Tim cartoon, just because I was four years old when that <laughs> I know you're old. Um because it because ninety three is when yeah. that ninety two, ninety three is when that hits. So yeah, I'm three, four years old. So odds are my mom at some point in a desperate attempt to get me to shut the hell up and, and, and sit still for a few minutes, sat me down and, uh, showed me that. And, but also at the same time, you know, that's when like the Adam West show was, uh, you know, still in syndication. So I, I remember being that age and watching like the Adam West Batman movie as a kid, um, on like TV land or something like that. So it was one of the, it was one of the two. I didn't start getting into the actual comics side of things until I was probably closer to like 10 years old. Um, and even then it was pretty lackadaisy. There wasn't a comic book store in my, in the town I was living at the time. So it wasn't as accessible for me. So all I had to go on was the cartoon and the, the Adam West reruns. And I had so many Batman action figures. It was ridiculous. Fair, fair. It's kind of funny because the action figure thing doesn't happen until I'm like a teenager. So I never yeah. really had a Batman action figure. And I want to say like really, really thinking about it. I don't yeah. think I had a Batman action figure until I was in my thirties. <laughs> Just because like, you know, I'm already a late teenager. I'm not really buying toys. And then, you know, I don't buy toys through my twenties, you know? So yeah, it's probably like, maybe late twenties, early thirties when I finally actually buy a, a Batman action figure, which is fine. You know, Transformers and Jaja were awesome. Um, all right. So with that in mind, you discover the cartoon, you get into the comics. What was your first theatrical experience for Batman? Uh, pro- probably mask of the phantasm. Okay. Because um, I was born in '89, so it wasn't it wasn't Keaton's Batman. Yeah. Um, and uh, Batman Returns, I think my mom didn't let me watch when it came out, just because she was like, "And eh, it, it's a little too adult." Which, having seen it in the years since, yeah, no, I you don't take a four year old to see Batman Returns. Um, I mean, but Penguin straight up bites a dude's nose yeah. off. That happens. It's it's yeah. It's it's a dark. It's it's a more more of an adult Batman movie than gets credit for. So it was pro- it was probably masking the Phantasm. I think I remember because I was in super into the show at that point. I'm pretty sure I begged my mom, but, and and I still contest that's one of the best Batman movies ever made. Yeah, yeah. I can remember seeing that surprisingly to an empty theater, and me and my buddy going like, I think there was like two or three other people with us, and it hadn't been out that long, and just kind of going like, did this come out too late? <laughs> Like why? Yeah, yeah. It, with with Batman Returns, it was one of those. I feel like the studio just kind of said, "Hey, you know what, Tim, do whatever you want to do." And he was like, "Oh, okay." And he did. And it just, it's one of those. It's like, okay, guys, dudes like Tim Burton need to have some amount of a leash. Yes. Yeah. No, it was. It, yeah, I just I feel like that that Mask of the Phantasm. It should have been. It should have been released 
while that show was still running and the show was already kind of, I mean, you know, it gets rebooted several years later, soft reboot with the whole redesign, but yeah, that was, it. I think the same ha- happens with a lot of those things because cartoons take so long to make is the thing gets popular. You start making the movie. And then by the time that movie comes out, the show has had its run. But, um, but yeah, I, to Mask of the Phantasm is a great first movie. What about live action? So then do you see Batman Begins in the theater? Is that your first? No, the first one I saw in theaters was Batman Forever. Uh, Mom took me to see Batman Forever. And uh, as a kid, you know, I loved it because <laughs> it's, 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 it's Batman. Um, it's a kid's movie. <laughs> well, even the same with Batman and Robin. As a kid, I was like, oh, it's Batman on screen. Uh, and there's jokes. Uh, I, I, I was, I was. However old it was when that came out, I didn't know any better. It wasn't until I got older and going back and rewatching, I was like, "Hey, this actually kind of sucks." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when you're when you're when you're, I mean, those Batman Forever and Batman and Robin were made to satisfy kids who just wanted to see a Batman movie, and and yeah, I was of the right age group at the time that it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and, and it, it is one of those like thinking about that because you know there's definitely a huge age gap between us. <laughs> <laughs> but also that yeah. like, yeah, there is a part of me that goes like, you know, a kid would have loved this. If I was into that cartoon and had been watching those cartoons and went and watched Batman and Robin, like it's perfectly. And it's what, you know, when you hear Joel Schumacher talk about Batman forever, like the big thing, Warner brothers is like, no, it's gotta be for kids. You got to pull that thing yeah. back and make it a kid's, a kid's movie. So that stuff kind of makes sense. But when you're, you know, I think I was mid twenties when those movies came out. That's not what you want to see. <laughs> yeah, you you want it to be a little bit more. Like I never, I, I still like Batman Forever, but only for the Batman stuff. So, I got it. Yeah. So I have a question for you that we can get into the Batman stuff a little more. Okay. Why do you think they've never done a Batman TV show? What? Like a live action Batman TV show, like uh, in um, recent years. I mean, I know like you know the the Adam West one, but like, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, in one word, the budget. It's it'd be expensive, and they have found in they have found over the years that Batman is as a character is basically a box office gold. Like it's gonna make money in the box office, and there's a lot more money to be made instantaneously in a quick amount of time with a movie than with a TV show uh, with a TV show. And this is kind of just cause I work in television. So with a television show, there are so many other factors in place for what determines if a television show is a success. It's got to be able to get uh, advertising sponsors. It's got to be able to maintain viewership over a continuous uh, period of time. Um, the networks have to be willing to devote to to dedicate a certain period of time to that show. There's so many factors that go into it. Whereas with a movie, the studio just has to say, "All right, rent out some studio space. Here's a check." And um, there's a much bigger and faster return on investment with a movie. So that that's my nerdy insider knowledge on on probably why. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, it really does come down to does come down to dollars and cents is like look we could we could do a batman show on tv but you know, a live action batman show on tv but they've found that like the animated stuff for kids just does well enough and it's is a lot with with stuff like batman like you make a tv show to sell toys yeah and you're not going to do that as much with a live action i mean look ha- i mean Back when like Batman and Robin, Batman Forever came out, yeah, there were toys everywhere. How many, how many the Batman toys have you seen in a store? Honestly, yeah. Like I've I've looked on other than Lego sets for building the Batmobile. There's there's not many, so it just makes more sense to make the movie and just get that return on investment because um, you can appeal to different audiences that way. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, because there is. I mean, I've said it for years. It's why they made Batman versus Superman. Batman is Warner Brothers cash cow. Like you said, they know yeah. even if the movie's bad, it's going to make money. And yeah, and yeah you, you, you just make Green Arrow Batman. 
Yeah. And that worked for a time. Yeah. Um, I, I just like everybody, I was super into those shows up until I wasn't because it seemed like they weren't anymore either. But yeah, it, it, again, like with the audience thing, especially by having the movies dedicated more because they know that they know that adults are going to go see the movies and they know the adults are probably going to bring their kids to see the movies, too. But they also know that then they have the the animated stuff for kids to also have the kids. So they get to appeal to both audiences that way. But they know that there's a better chance of kids sitting down and watching the animated stuff on a regular basis than there is of adults sitting down to watch watch the show. The TV stuff is where they get to be a little bit more experimental. And with Batman, because he's such a cash cow and because Batman fans are nuts, um, we are. It's it's they get to have more control over things on by doing it as a movie. Well, and I dare say, especially with the trend that I mean, we were talking about this before air is like this trend of making binge shows. Now, you know, the CW verse doesn't happen if it starts now, you know, it just had like the CW arrow verse really is like the end of the era of the TV show as we knew it in the, you know, all through the late eighties, nineties and the early two thousands. So yeah, you're right. You're going to make a six episode HBO max Batman show that half the people are going to love and half the people are going to hate. And then it's going to destroy the character and you're going to have to wait 10 years before you can reboot it again. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and plus like right now television was with the way streaming things is going. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's dominated by stuff like, like game of Thrones and ring house, of the dragon rings of power there. And, and, I, th- I think Warner Brothers, even even prior to all the nonsense that's been going on, I think they've been more than happy to just kind of let everybody else have at it. They're like, we know we know where we do best. We're going to stick to what we know. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So going into television and talking about that kind of stuff, let, let's, let's do this. Let's have fun with a question for you, even though I think I know your answer, even though I could probably, you know, take it out of the contention. But... What is your favorite Batman animated series? If you take away, see, I'm trying to think, do I want to take away the Tim verse or just Batman, the animated show? <laughs> I mean, they're kind of the same thing. Let's um, take away Batman, the animated series. Cause obviously that's the best one, you know? So the one from the 90s, the one from the nineties is, is not available. Correct. The one from the nineties with Kevin okay. Conroy as the voice is not available. As far as that well, series, I'm not going to take away the whole Tim verse, but that series. Okay. Then it's, it's, mm, I mean, I do love me some Batman beyond. I really do. That's pretty much a, yeah. Cause it's Blade Runner Batman. Um, it's, it's, it's probably Batman beyond, which is probably what you knew I was going to say. Uh, the, the, the quote unquote reboot of Batman, the animated series, when it becomes the new Batman adventures with, Tim Drake and Nightwing um, was was fine. There was some really good stuff in there, but it felt like their heart wasn't in it as much. Um, it was just their way of 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 testing the waters to see how much they could get away with before they went full blown with Justice League, <laughs> which was which Justice League and Justice League Unlimited are amazing. If you haven't taken the time to go back and rewatch those, I highly recommend you do. They're great. They're great animated TV. Um, but yeah, Batman beyond, and, and I've said it many times on this show too, which by why you knew it was going to be my answer. <laughs> Batman beyond just, it, it scratches a lot of itches for me being a massive blade runner fan, being a Batman fan, the fact that they had the guts to try something totally new and, and, and off the rails and that it's, it's, stu- it's stuck the landing as well as it did. Um, it's yeah, it's definitely, and plus that return of the Joker movie is, is fantastic. So yeah, Batman beyond for sure. Well, And I think like the thing that, I don't know. If, I don't think I said, cause I was listening to our Batman beyond episode. The thing that I didn't mention is like, if you really take a moment to think about it, it's brilliant because kids can identify with Robin and that's why you have Robin with Batman, but you yeah. want to be Batman. Most, you know, most yeah. kids don't want to be Robin. I mean, they, they do and they don't. When you're playing Batman with your friends, you fight over who gets to be Batman, not who gets to be Robin. So to make Batman a teenager, in a really cool sci-fi environment, I think like conceptually is brilliant. Like that you thought to do that. And it's also like a heck of a wide, like swinging for the fences thing that worked very well for them, obviously. Um, So I think that that was, it really is like, 
Like, yeah, that was brilliant. Like Batman, Batman beyond was there. I like to call these, I like to call them uh, action figure fever dreams because it's, if I'm a kid and I'm trying to come up with my own Batman stuff, I'm going to try to make Batman as cool and badass as possible. So hell yeah, I'm going to give him a special suit that makes him super strong and has ga- more gadgets and stuff like that. Like, yeah, and I, I equate it to like, <laughs> he can fly. I, I equate it to like in, in the book of Boba Fett, when, when Boba Fett's riding a rancor, I'm like, that is, that is some, that is something I would have made happen playing with my star Wars action figures as a kid. I'm going to have Boba Fett sitting on the back of a rancor and trashing stuff. And Dave Filoni was just like, you know what? I'm feeling five years old right now. Let's, let's give the people what, what, what they want. And Batman beyond was very much that. And then yeah, to also have it be a, a younger, it was, it was a teenager. It was like, yeah, there was that increased relatability of being a Batman who's still kind of figuring out what the hell he's doing because he's young. Yeah. And you still have Batman there advising young Batman. Exactly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It really is. So going to comics, do you have a favorite, run of the comic books um that's a that's a loaded question um i don't know if i have like one particular favorite run so much as just favorite like co- like you know collected story arcs like i mean obviously long halloween's incredible uh under the red hood's incredible um some of my favorite batman stuff though was in like Grant Morrison's JLA run. Um, I've said before, uh, Grant Morrison's JLA New World Order is one of my favorite yes. uh, story arcs, and and the way they use Batman in that is is spectacular. Um, and like I said, I was I was way more on board with the New Fifty Two than I think a lot of people were, just because of of where I was at with comic books at the time. Um, the uh, the whole like the whole like Blackest Night story arc was really interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say I have like one particular run that sticks out so much as just, yeah, those collected stories, um, of like the big well-known ones. I do think under the red hood is my favorite. I think that that's, I mean, that's damn near flawless storytelling. And it's, it's one that I've said that like the, the animated movie is, is amazing. It's one that you could do live action easily and, and it would, give you the potential to kind of like backdoor open a lot of back doors to other characters without committing to them. Um, so yeah, it that's kind of my, my cop out answer uh, for that question. <laughs> All right. Well then let me narrow it down a little bit here. Do you have a favorite artist like for Batman? Like, do you like sit there when someone says like Batman comic, this is the, the image that pops in your head. So I'm going to be a little sacrilegious and say no. Um, How? I myself, and and here's why. So I myself am not an artist, but I do consider myself an amateur writer. Okay. So I've always been far more drawn to the writers than I have the artists. There have been times where I've been like, oh, this does look really cool. Um, But like when we, when we talked about Batman, the cult, I really liked that art style. I thought it was a very good art style as opposed to like um, Batman Arkham Asylum. I was not a fan, yeah. but I could not tell you the names of the artists. So I'm, I'm more in tune with the writers than I am with, with the artists. Well, then you just gave me my next question. Who's your favorite writer <laughs> on Batman? Um, oh God, you know, I mean, both Jeff Johns and Scott Snyder from the more recent stuff have been fantastic. Um, because like Scott Snyder's take with the whole um, Court of Owls thing was, was so oh it was so oh, good. redefining um, and, it really like up until that uh, point Batman is always the smartest person in the room always ahead of the game and to take that away from yeah. him after you know it not being done for so long well and and they they made Damian Wayne palatable I still hate him I still hate Damian Wayne with every fiber of my being they made him palatable though. And that's that, that is hard to do. Yeah. Cause Damian Wayne is the worst, See, but yeah, it, 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 it would be, yeah. I mean, Scott Snyder and Jeff Johns, man, uh, but all, like, I mean, and we've, we've talked about a lot of them on the show, especially as a couple of them have passed away. I mean, it's, it's, it's easier, I think to find a bad Batman writer than a, than like, who's my favorite. But even then I'm not sure I could pull a name for you. Cause I don't think there's really been a, 
a bad writer so much as just like like Grant Morrison. Yeah. Like Grant Morrison did not like Arkham Asylum, but I really like Grant Morrison's other stuff with him. So yeah, there, there's definitely a weird stylistic thing with that, and also like I guess yes. I'm not saying you should because I always get mad when someone says, well, you know, watch the first four episodes of the show and then the fifth one, it gets really good or I don't watch it. (laughs) And Uh, I think Arkham Asylum, I think it was like the third or fourth reading. And I was like, Oh, now I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) Now I get it. I got, I'm, I'm on board now. This makes much more sense. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So then, so, New 52, you really like New 52. What about New 52 gets you? It just, I, I don't know. I, I didn't see, I liked the idea of doing a reset and just trying something new because when you're writing the same characters the same way for the same number of years and you have, it's like, you're like, I have these new ideas. I want to try them. And you're probably getting some pushback because they're like, well, we're already doing this and this and this. So we can't fit that in. It's like, well, then screw it reboot it and then we can retell their origins a little differently or we can we can try like like the new 52 made me like superman more because up to that point superman was the boy scout golden child could do no wrong new 52 was like what if we made superman kind of a dick and it's like you know what that's a bit more relatable for me you know i guess it's it's annoying to have a character who's that powerful but is also like the nicest guy on the face <laughs> of the earth so new 52 was like let's just make superman kind of a douche and it offset some of that and it did for me um i liked their the way they played with some of the characters origins and their interactions and their personalities and um it was just an interesting way to tell some new stories with characters we already knew so there was a familiarity like with batman or wonder woman but we were able to try some different stuff i like i'm i liked dude the aquaman new 52 stuff is amazing um it's so good i, I did like some of the batman stuff i did the thing that i think hurt me the most with new 52 was that that really pulled Nightwing into the Batman family. I mean, he was already getting there, but it was like, now yeah. he's in Gotham permanently. And I was just like, no, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't all a big, it wasn't all a hit, yeah. but also new 52 is where they pulled Constantine into the DC proper. Yes. And, and everyone knows that like Batman's my, Batman's my letter. A Constantine's my number one, like, like, when people say who's your favorite comic book character i'm like other than batman constantine and that's where they pulled him in that's where the the justice league dark came in and that was all i mean so there was a lot of things that came out of the new 52 that i was a huge fan of that i'm not going to sit here and say the new 52 was bad was it all good absolutely not but i got a lot out of it that i now want more of well and i i will say this I mean, though, I think that's more of a rebirth thing than a new 52 thing. The fact that Wonder Woman had never been in Justice League Dark until rebirth. I was like, yeah, that makes all the sense. <laughs> it does. Because, well, because that's how Justice League Dark starts is all the Justice League gets murked by magic. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, um, um, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Now what? Yeah. So no, that, that, that when they, I collected that for a while, and that was like, yeah, that make that's a no brainer for Wonder Woman to be on that team. So, but yeah. um, well, you stole kind of my closing question about whether Batman was your favorite character by saying Constantine's your A and Batman's your one, or did I do that backwards? It, it, it's it's the same difference. <laughs> so then, did you like when Batman was in the Justice League Dark movies? Oh. Oh, I mean, it was, it was yes, because it made sense. Because like they knew that Constantine and Justly Dark was going to pull the um, was going to pull the niche fans who were already into that. But they needed to throw Batman in there to pull in the more uh, the the broader audience from DC who maybe hadn't read that or wasn't as familiar with it. So I, I totally get it. Um, plus, Batman and John Constantine have always had great interactions in the comics. Um, I I I. I so the the injustice video game um is is great and it's great storytelling but the there's the injustice prequel comics that they're like about the first five years before the video game takes place and year three is all about the magic users like constantine and zatanna and and swamp thing and all of them and what was going on with them because they're not in the game 
So they're like, okay, so what we're going, what because because obviously any team that has the magic users on it is going to take out Superman because su- magic Trump Superman. So they were able to explain what was going on with them and the interactions with Batman and Constantine in that run are amazing. Um, Batman and Constantine have just a great accidental chemistry because they're two characters who who just should not like each other and they don't but it, it comes across as incredibly entertaining um in the first justice league dark animated movie i just i one of my favorite things is anytime something magical happens we hold on batman for just three seconds so he can go uh. yeah yeah <laughs> and i laughed so hard every time because he's just like I hate this. I hate this so much. God damn it. I hate my life right now. And I, there is nothing more entertaining than frustrated Batman. Well, and that's, I mean, <clears throat> it's Satana is one of those characters that is, I have like a bit of a hole in my knowledge as far as on the comics go pre new 52. Sure. But I think a lot of yeah, people do, but then honestly. them creating a relationship between Batman and her from the past, I thought was brilliant and bringing her into the animated show. Yeah. And then of course that plays so much into the, the piggy up here, little pig or a little pig episode of justice league unlimited. Yeah. So they, to also have like, you know, Batman's been around for so long and would know everybody somehow having him play against Constantine is awesome. Well, and, and the thing with him and Zatanna ha- had been a thing before it just, it was often overshadowed. It wasn't the strongest relationship in the comics, because he trained with Zatara the magician, who was her father. So, of course, they would know each other. But their relationship wasn't one that ever was played very well, just, just because it was it, it, people just weren't as into it. It just makes a lot of sense that they would have one. And their relationship has always been portrayed more as like it was romantic briefly for a time, but. They, but they stayed friends, but it actually kind of works out that way. It's like they both just kind of realized like, yeah, this isn't going to work because you're magical and I hate anything to do with magic because it makes me groan and it's funny for people watching the movie. So it was. And yeah, Batman's one of those like he, he knows everybody. He just he just he's just that guy. He's that guy at the party who you're like, I don't know anybody here. And he's like, I'll introduce you to everybody. I know everybody here. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So in conclusion, you love Batman. If there's somebody out there i want you to suggest a comp like two or three comics and maybe like a movie cartoon like what would you suggest somebody who i mean i know everybody knows batman but they may not know him as well as you do so if you if you really want to get into batman on on a truly like like you're just like listen i'm a batman fan i really want to get into the minutia of it i'm gonna say from a movie standpoint i think you should absolutely watch batman mask of the phantasm because that delves into his past and why and the whole promise he makes to his parents. I mean, the, the, the scene in the movie where with him at their, at their, in the rain at their gravestone is, is fantastic. So I would say, watch that. And I would say, watch any of the Batman origin films, whether it's Batman begins 89 Batman, or even the Batman with, with Robert Pattinson. I'd say, watch any of those from a TV show standpoint, I'm just, I'm going to just going to say, watch the nineties animated and watch Batman beyond. And, and, and you'll, you'll be golden there. As far as comics go, I'm going to say you should probably start with the long, and these are kind of a gimme, but it, they're a gimme for a reason. The long Halloween under the red hood. And I'm also going to throw in Grant Morrison's JLA new world order because of what Batman, the way you get to see Batman's intelligence in that, um is is very good and then just 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 for shits and giggles i'll also say also say throw in batman year one because if you're gonna start start at the beginning and those are the titles that i think really get into the psychology of batman i know someone's probably screaming why not the dark knight returns that's to me to me that's later reading we're talking batman 101 that's like batman 102 well and see batman return dark knight returns as much as i enjoy it it is so dated now. If that's that's the other problem it's, is it is it is very dated. Like you have got to be in kind of the right mindset to read that. You've got to be able to tell yourself this is the eighties. Like this is as eighties as it fucking gets. Yeah. And so that's where you where I'm. That's why I'm like that's 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 Batman. 
102 in college is Dark Knight Returns because you need to have that bigger appreciation for Batman as a character before you can really delve into some, like a story like that. I agree. I agree. Well, Mike, thanks for letting me poke around in your brain and to have the fans get to know you more. Um, of course. Why don't you close us out, amigo, with those beautiful tones you got? <laughs> Oh yeah. So yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to interview Matt, uh, for next week's episodes. So you can get to know, get to know him a bit more as well. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, uh, chat with us online, you can chat with us on Twitter. Uh, find us on Twitter at we are the Batman, or you can find me at Mr. Mike Shea. You can come at me at Mr. J Ninja on Twitter. Um, even though we don't do as much anymore, you can go to the Facebook group, www.facebook.com slash fanboy junction with the K. And I'm always on there just kind of monitoring and responding to anything that's put out there. Lots of places you can find us online to hang out and talk with us. So make sure you do that. And we'll see you guys again next time here with another episode of we are the Batman, same bat time, same bat podcast channel. Bye.